Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today we are demonstrating the Flight Sim Studio Imperia 175. It's a package of the 175 and this 170. A nice project, and I like the airplane. And now we would go through it with pros and cons, as we say. Because I like the feature and the idea that we can import the flight plan directly from the simulator, just like the default planes. And I would like I, more developers do that, because those that's not... I know they have the integration from SimBrief and stuff, but for those that's not using that and just want to play around with the plane, it's nice that you can import the flight plan. And I don't understand why they're not doing it more, because it's a feature, you know? You shouldn't be using the default flight plan for when you are programming the plane, I know, because that causes some of the limitations that we would already see now. Uh, that's why you have a custom FMS, because there are some limitations for the waypoints and when it would jump to the next one and stuff. And there are some issues with that in this plane too, because it uses the default stuff uh, and you can't enter... Uh, that easily other waypoints I tried it and sometimes it works and sometimes yeah it, it does and then it just like yeah it just does it a bit weird so without further ado let's jump right into it and make a flight and see how easy it is um, performance wise there is something that people have talking about that there are some uh, it's a bit heavy uh, I found that if you are turning one of the main flight systems off, it seems like it lowers the uh, the load for the CPU, and I would uh, do that uh, as well uh, because it has a bit of an uh, improvement over time. Because you might not see it in the beginning, but a bit over time, uh, the performance degrades. Usually, the plane is not powered up as it is now. It's just because we have put the ground power unit and switched on the batteries uh, so it's on uh, what I'm usually is doing is I'm switching off the electronic uh, IDG2 for some reason I don't know why but when we're doing that it seems like the system is requiring less plus I'm switching off the display over by the Co-pilot, oh, not that one. Sorry, by the co-pilot, and it seems like uh, it has an effect. Of course, it would have an effect that less displays and stuff. That's right. But um, as a tester myself, back um, in time, um, we know that. But um, without further ado, let's. Uh, jump right to it shall we and it's getting a bit too dark now so I would change the time a little bit here there we go just a little bit so we can see a little better um, you can open and close the doors here from the tablet you have other options too I'm not gonna go too much into the tablet because it's self-explanatory and such you can see you have charts if you have the access uh, to that and you can uh, go in and use uh, SimBrief integration with the flight plan but by default it just loads the standard flight plan and I feel as I said before I like the idea because why not just use what you already have of course here does it by automatically you could say that maybe when you are setting up the FMS if you would like that or you want to do it custom yourself you know uh, but I'm a fan of, of the integration because it makes it easier for all users and it makes it uh, possible for everyone to fly and by the way you can say that right now the way they are doing it is also good in s some way because it automatically uh, imports the flight plan uh, as as it has done now um, and as said before it has good and bad sides so um, but at least it's in the system now so you can actually just fire up the engine start the flight and off you go no programming at all if you like um, and it's a good thing for 
for some kind of for some uses that want to fly but don't want to get too bored with uh, programming uh, a lot of systems and stuff so it depending on what market you are targeting your products but it seems like it's an an okay uh, mix here even it's uh, not so complex with the FMS uh, and there is some um, issues you can get into if you are um, going too much into it um, yeah so um, arrival we haven't set uh, because it's more or less set for the default um, where we don't have chosen we have only chosen the departure out of here um, but we can uh, select the runway we can say that we are landing on runway 29 uh, and it's all red and apply and now it's in and you see that it makes like a calculation and we would see that sometimes if you are entering a uh, waypoint or something then it would l do like a, a calculation and such and and I don't know why but at one point I actually entered some data where it had to change the flight plan and it was just like it kept calculating and entering the, f the waypoint so I have found a little flaw but um, let's not talk too much about that right now because I really like this plane. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, I really wish that um, the development would be uh, further because there are plans ahead. So, um, and it flies very well. I have to say. Now let's just turn on all the lights so we don't forget that. Uh, I'm not going to do with the pre procedures and all that stuff because I just want to show you what the plane is capable of and stuff. Um, so that's how it is okay also so we don't sit here for half an hour okay closing the doors just um, turning on the APU here here we go just turning it over and then it would take a little while before we can t you can't immediately press the to on uh, there we go and now it would do its thing here um, and then I usually go in here and switch those options here off also to increase the performance a bit uh, that's fine yep okay and I'm not gonna go too much into the pre-flight here because um, it is possible to fly the airplane without, you know, um, the zero fuel weight. We would we would need the value if it is, you know. Um, cruise altitude is set to uh, flight level one two zero. I guess it automatically catched up what we have set in the. Let's try to see if it automatically because I haven't put it in fact. So I don't know why. It got that but anyway see it's grayed out um, like it's not available yet because of the missing information I suppose here um, and uh, says our zero fuel weight is 62.3 so 62.4 in fact isn't that usually we are rounding up to be more precise uh, always better to set a higher value than a too low value you know and it has our gross weight here and we are going to this altitude so that's just fine as you see but see it's not still grayed out like it's not implemented just like uh, you can't go in and make a fixed point 
usually you can go in and make fix points fix and get fix information for some uh, navigational equipment but it seems like it's not in here yet um, so that's how it is you know what it is try to sit here it flaps to departure and that's just fine for a takeoff and can go to the climb page and see that we are here nothing really going on in the cruise and the descent uh, but I'm not gonna miss too much with that because usually it's possible to fly it manually you know um, so that's easy uh, I don't need all those calculations uh, for that because you can calculate it yourself for top of descent and stuff so no need for that okay we are on the APU now so we don't need the ground power unit we can uh, remove the engine covers and the safety pin and the cones and we are sh so take the wheel chocks away and now I'm just gonna turn off the the electronic flight bag because I'm not gonna use it for now okay and um, we're just gonna start the engine number two and then we will see what's going on here with the plane everything is fine and then we're going outside and we are gonna start the usual pushback from Microsoft Flight Simulator so here we're just gonna make a straight pushback when we are ready to get this starting so everything is fine we are ready for our main departure out of here here and it makes the warning that we have the electricity and we know that just flip that back turn on the engine number one let that start up so we are ready for our taxi here so we get parking brakes on and we are ready and we would now shut down the uh, APU as we don't need it anymore as we have both engines up and running more or less so there we go then we're gonna set flap 2 1 2 set and zoom in on our little map here and uh, yeah Seems like the wind is the opposite direction from what what we had planned. So then we would just go into the departure and say runway, and uh, then it's the opposite direction. So it is uh, this one, and then I have to think about it because it was set for that one. see can I see that on them let's see on the map if I can remember was it uh, yeah the telemo there we go apply instead poof now it should update there we go we have updated flat plane and you see it's the default so it also updates our um, flight plan in here so it's relying as uh, set on the default uh, flight planning uh, and as mentioned that's both good and bad so 
Here we go. We are taxing to the active runway here and making our flight towards Rønne at Bornholm. And it's a short flight, so yeah. See, I don't know why those buttons here, they are a bit too shiny it seems like, but to me, but anyway. But I really like the way it's flying, so let's just do that. And we are going to depart from here because, oh, but day, what the happened there? There was someone that wanted to get in front of us, it seems like. But we're just going to depart from over here, as already was what I wanted to say. So, um, and we have a warning here, of course, because, see, let me show you here. That's why we are not um, slowing down that good. That's because this one is not on, see? Always good to look at your panels. So now it's only the IGG-2 that's off, and we know that, and it was intended. So, here we go. And now he races to <laughs> get in front of us again. But, let's see. Here we go. Lined up. And take off. Here we go. Listen to those engines. G1. Oh. Rotate. They even. 80 knots. That's new for me. Maybe it's a setting or an update since last time. I guess it's an update since last time because he is, and that's because I didn't say the uh, the speeds correctly. You see, that was why it said. But it was good a demonstration that it actually is in there. Um, so here we go. Gears coming up. Throttle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we hear the gear, and we are gonna. Our main target is speed up here so we can start our acceleration a bit more and getting the flaps fully up. And um, then we are good to go, as you see. And by the way, as you see, it hand flies very, very, very well. Really likes how we now making the turn. Really response but also not too uh, too much you know and we are in ice condition the plane just tells us <coughs> so um, let's see what it says here there we go and we're gonna turn on the autopilot and as you can see there there is a thing about the the autopilot because it pushes more than one button uh, I found that if I'm changing by a key command uh, let me show you that if I turn on the nav mode now it should track the nav and uh, now I wanna increase the see what happened with the nav it actually disconnected now when I'm using my push button for adjusting my speed you see uh, when I have a key combining so I don't know what's going on there because uh, of course it shouldn't be doing so but it seems like it does for some reason um, and that's not right of course now let's set the standard barometer here so we don't get too high. Oops, there we go. And we can set our brakes. We actually forgot it for the uh, RTO, so sorry about that. But as I'm saying, I'm more wanting to demonstrate the plane's flying behavior and stuff than, than all the procedures, because you will learn that. You can do that. That's the easy thing. I'm going in between and demonstrating the plane 
um, flying it from A to B because it's pretty much what the most people are wanting to see and I don't want this to be an hour long video you know. also because it's not a live stream or anything it's just a demonstration video so that's how it is and here we are leaving Sweden for the ocean out towards Denmark out to the small island of Kwanda it's a bit noisy out here here in the cockpit where it's a bit more less noisy and we can go into the cabin for a little little check out here see looks pretty good in here uh, well mo okay modeled you know there's nothing th fancy as such but it is a cabin and as some is saying it's not a, a cabin simulator you know but it's always nice to have this and well if you think about it well this could nearly be the real deal you know when you're looking at the picture like this so um, it could actually be a bit difficult to see the difference especially when the sun is as it is there in the, the cloud you know so um, it's pretty fine and it seems like I mean those signs here is actually animated in here I mean they are uh, not animated uh, lit up I mean let's uh, see if that did yeah of course and the smoking too I guess I mean it is yep there we go you see it's working all working even if it's just small touches you know but it's always those small touches that makes things feel, uh, look good and stuff you know um, yeah and in here you could open the door if you like <laughs> yeah. of course we are in the air so we don't want that to happen and you can't go in here at the lavatory in the back also in the front you can't as far as I remember it you can't um, so that's how it is there's no, nothing really down here to do either and and that that's very much fine because there's nothing really to do you know so uh, and I don't understand those that's actually doing those animations in here because what can I use for oh I pull this out or <laughs> open this you know it's a thing that you would say ah nice touch you know uh, but when you're thinking about it how often would you do would you do it I know that from uh, from uh, from uh, some developers just like I mean it is actually have manipulated all these buttons in here and and, and that's nice just like the the lighting panel here you know like you can uh, control like you would do in in real life you know on and stuff you know emergency and you can dim and brighten and and, and stuff you know uh, see here it actually works with the emergency lighting and stuff um, so it seems like they have some of the buttons working and some not but um, and it's fine see uh, we actually see the lights there like you usually would have in the real plane um, galley oxygen mask now it should be on I don't think they have <laughs> no they haven't <laughs> some really <laughs> would have made the mask flip down or something like that but maybe they have a plan of that at one point since they have implemented it I don't know uh, so yeah but it's nice touches yeah so it's nice and now I would go back here in the cockpit because we are actually getting closer to Bornholm now and we should soon start our descent into Rone at Bornholm and uh, that's nice because it was meant as a short trip uh, just to demonstrate the plane and, and, and such uh, just to demonstrate um, some of the capabilities of the plane or 
missing or how should we say uh, let's turn on the heading mode now because in a moment I guess it would uh, catch up some errors uh, as I tr wanna demonstrate some things here going into the flight plan let's say we need to make a, a direct to the BOR station of uh, Rønne that's Hor uh, you see it actually makes its uh, calculation in more or less in, in real time you know um, and see invalid uh, action parenthesis uh, parenthesis uh, arrival I can't I can't edit my arrival so when it is in like arrival mode I can't change it uh, or if I wanted to say something different up here I they can't uh, air traffic control can't give me uh, an alternative or or something like that or let's say we want to go back to, to Sweden uh, I'm not allowed to see and not even if I put it in the uh, line up here because uh, maybe it would but see poof here goes my entire flight plan because now <coughs> I pushed it in a top uh, ahead of our uh, uh, arrival so you can change and then let's see uh, but it is because we are uh, running within the limitations of uh, of the default uh, auto uh, pilot and uh, navigational systems so you see there is some capabilities but uh, it's not optimum and um, I mean there is also not a hold function in the plane at the present moment so so uh, don't expect wonders when it comes to, to those things you know now we can try go back and say uh, nav and see if we can reactivate this uh, let's try that runway 29 uh, just this Let's apply. Let's see if the airplane would then do it. Nav in flight plan. Yep. It still says uh, direct to Malmö. Let's uh, try to input all red. There we go. See now it updated. So um, just know that that uh, if there is an uh, an uh, arrival in you need to put it up to the origin but it's not right because that's where it should say where, it's where you're coming from and, and going and then your destination would be down there so there is a little walk around there you can see but you are working within the limits of uh, Microsoft's flight simulator more than the uh, airplane because you see it is capable of doing it but I also know that at one point I tried to do something like this and then it really messed it up it didn't even know where to go uh, after that as mentioned the plane just kept uh, going in a loop you could nearly say uh, because it it really didn't know what to do uh, it kept recalculating in the FMS it was just <laughs> keep uh, loading and loading and loading so but that's nothing about the plane it's not a fault for the plane that's also what's important for me to say it's nothing about the plane it's about uh, how the Microsoft flight simulator is built and and we are working within the limitations of that because it still uses the stock FMS data hopefully in the future uh, we will see an, an, uh, uh, change in that I mean they have said at one point they would do our custom FMS uh, integration I mean uh, but for now 
this is how it is and that's what I'm demonstrating and it is the latest version uh, the beta 19 I mean they're calling it so here we are flying parallel with the airport of Grønne and uh, I would like us to get a bit closer to ish to the coast now because um, to make the flight shorter you know and um, that's what we're doing and some might wondering why I'm doing this video and stuff and that is basically because I want to show people what this add-on is and what it isn't you know because it's a good flying aircraft it is uh, the handling and characteristics about it is really really <laughs> to my liking you know but um, flight planning wise there is a few quirkiness and I want to be fair about that and, and to say that because that's that's the truth even it's a good uh, solid flying plane you know and now we are flying on the autopilot I could also show you just to say you know what autopilot, autopilot. disconnect autopilot. Now. now we are out of the autopilot and we are back to the manual flight here flight director off everything is about to go off try to switch off Throttle. the auto to only keep the yaw damper on. Um, yeah. So now we are basically hand flying this bird, and it is so nice to hand fly. I really love it. So let's just descend here and make sh in for a short final instead of the whole procedure. Just what they would do the air traffic controllers in real life if it is required. We have it set for the medium braking. Let's set it for the low braking because I guess we are coming in good. We have a little high speed here and uh, that would be fine we are slowing down anyway so it will be just fine just makes our approach a bit shorter and as we are flying with non traffic it's okay and this is actually what they usually would do in small airports try to shorten your route and to get you in as quick as possible because less CO2 and well when there's no traffic and stuff and doesn't do any bad it's just fine okay we are at 3500 or passing we should say slowing down further now altitude we would now lower the gear to get the speed to drop even a bit further because we are closer to the airport and um, we are ready for the 2500 approach here <coughs> and we hear the 2500 feet I don't know, it sounds a bit weird with the sound for that. It sounds like you really feel like it's recorded beside. It doesn't feel like it's coming directly from the plane, you know. It sounds too clean, or how should I say? Okay. Speed is going down, and we are ready for getting the flaps out for our final approach here there we go first flap level 
and you see how nice it hand flies. Really, really, really hand flies nice. Next flap level, here we go. Putting in a little throttle to not slow down too quickly because we need some momentum to a bit of momentum here we go. Okay. Next flap stage. And we have a bit of tailwind and One the reason the reason why I wanted to land this way and not the opposite is that the runway is up in the opposite uh, end here, so if we came the other way we had to make a backtrack and stuff, so to make it shorter and it's perfectly fine, we only have a wind of 2 knots, so we are really within the limits, well within the limits of our landing here. So, here we go. 500, 500. Yeah, we have heard that. <laughs> 400. Cross check 400. 300. 200. Yeah. There we go. 100. S slowing even further down here for a nice flare. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There we go. Nearly a butter. And we should be in the reverse, versus reverse screen. And landing completed. And remark we are still in the uh, reversers. We're not out of the reversers yet. I leave the reversers now. And the clever pilots would know why. There we go. Why we do that. Um, what happened there? Let's try. I don't know what happened there. I never seen that issue before. It's like. The brakes are set, but I can't disconnect them. I used the brakes to brake, but <laughs> I thought I think we have got a bug or something. I never experienced that before, because it like it never did this before. So, um, Well, I guess we have to stop the flight here, and the recording <laughs> was not a good way to end the video. I'm sorry, but hope you liked it.